today. We're on a six and three quarter inch blast hole pattern that was drilled up here on the west side of the pit. And what we're trying to do is a little hole walls blast hole stabilization work today. This, these are holes that were here that were drilled with uh, six and three quarter inch tricones. And we're going to give you a bit of an example of what we've done to improve this. This is a fairly typical hole collar. You can see it's rough, actually pretty dry, very friable, ability to slough in. These holes are all wet. You really can't see the water, but there's water in all of these at about 10 or 16 feet, somewhere in there. As you go along, you can see the washing effect that bailing the water with the cuttings has done here. And these hole plugs are three and four feet deep into these holes. See the quality of the cuttings themselves. Pile is dry for the most part, and again, quite friable. Some of these holes demonstrate the difficulty of collaring in. What they've had here. All pretty typical. You can see that some of them have slopped radically. You can see that these don't really want to stay open very well. And some of them don't stay open at all due to the friability, the looseness of the ground vibration of the machine growing next to it shakes a lot of this material loose. Well, what we've done today with D5 and D2 is to mix some hole stabilizer product in the water injection tanks, increasing the viscosity of the water, aiding and abetting the drilling of some of these holes. And you've just seen what was done with conventional water injection. Now we'll show you a few holes that were drilled with D5 on the same pattern using the whole wall stabilizer. You can see that's a nice neat gun barrel bore hole. The material is bound, bonded together on the top. As this dries, it's going to set up and be real stable. Another hole, you can see that there is a totally different look to the cuttings and the stemming pile. There's a row of holes here that were collared in quickly and easily, drilled to depth. Uh, one of the questions that Wyatt asked me was how it was going to do in water, and these holes are all drilled in a uh, saturated area of the pit here that's got groundwater standing in these holes at about 10 feet. You can see the nice, neat collar. The hole is a real precise diameter, six and three quarter down through the sub drill place where they've always had problems here before. The texture of the cuttings is totally different. They're a lot coarser. I don't know if the tape is showing you how encapsulated the fines are with the bigger cuttings. If you ran this through a sieve mesh, you'd find that you had an average larger size of the cuttings here. These holes are probably being drilled a little quicker. A little more efficiently. We've increased the viscosity of the baling medium, therefore it's lifting a lot of these cuttings out. Cleaner and neater, giving you a bonding effect. We're literally gluing this stuff together. What we've got here are the sample sacks from the last two holes drilled. These are the cuttings from the first hole using the standard water injection. This was a D2 drill pet rubber tire D40K, six and three quarter inch hole. You can see the fineness of the cuttings, and how that bit has to re-grind them to fix them with the available baling capabilities of the compressor. And this is the second hole. This was drilled using the polymer. See, there's quite a difference as far as the size of the cuttings. The encapsulation is very obvious there.
We're located in Southern California on the East Side Reservoir Project. Uh, currently they are mining uh, various types of rocks which may incorporate quartzites, phyllites, some limestone, all used to be put on the dam, quartzites are a filter rock. The fill lights you can consider as run a mine directly run to the dam. Currently there's seven DM45 drills on this side of the project, three 5230 excavators, two 5130 excavators, and a fleet of approximately 27, 28 trucks. Drilling consists of, in one area, a BA2 quartzite. This quartzite is run from the quarries to the crusher, where it is crushed and made into filter material for the dam itself. What we're looking at is the exterior wall, or final wall, of what is called BA2. And what is of interest? is the back wall and the fact that they were required to drill 100 foot pre-split holes through solid mass of quartzite rock but in some areas they encountered quite a bit of fractured rock and water. They used Matex drilling fluids to pump down the 100 foot holes and maintain an open drill hole. Currently, like I said, we're looking at the back wall of BA2, and if you look real closely, especially in the wet zones, you can see 100 foot pre-split holes. These holes are 6 and 3 quarter inch diameter holes, and again, they're 100 foot, in some cases 110 foot. Uh, in this area that we're looking at now, you can see quite a bit of water leaching out of the walls. In this area, Matex was ex used exclusively to keep open the wall. You keep open the holes. Prior to that, we had to use collar to try to keep the holes open. And as you can see, a fairly nice wall that runs approximately 2,500, 3,000 feet in length. I'll pan back as much as I can, and you can see the upper benches and hopefully you can see the pre-split holes. Still located in VA2, which is considered the corpse side portion of uh, the quarry. And what you're looking at is a big space currently uh, being mined, the filter rock. Matex is generally used on the back row or front row of the preceding shots where the rock has been fractured by the blast. And the front row, which we're looking back back here, uh, look, there's a defined energy trough. And usually that front row has been fairly fractured from the preceding blast. And Matex is used there. Rule of thumb with the Matex is one quart for every hundred gallons. Of course, it might vary with property. Generally not more, but maybe a little bit more, or a little bit less. You can kind of see in the background uh, the high wall with the 100 foot tree split hole, in the area where a lot of water was uh, encountered. And uh, now I'm standing all the way across the wall where Mace has to be used off the top. What we're looking at now is uh, various drill holes. Uh, in this area, we encountered quite a few clay seams, faults, and dikes which uh, lessened the integrity of the hole and made it difficult to get a good or decent collar. Here we use Matex as well to try to maintain the integrity of the hole. And uh, as a rule, the product works fairly well uh, and it's the best we've used to date. Product. 
And in that area, we have numerous faults, numerous dikes, and numerous bedding planes, which uh, run from medium hard, hard, to sandy and clay material. There may take a few quite often, and in some cases, quite similar to PA2, uh, in which uh, along the back end of the shot for a the first pattern. Uh, this is uh, Dennis Graves with May Tech and uh, Tom Jensen, who is the drilling superintendent with AWG and in charge of completing drills as well as the quarry. Uh, been with them for nearly two years, I believe. What we're looking at now is a blast hole. If you look at the hole closely, you can kind of see a darker layer. Uh, this layer it's basically to make that diffusion of the coal to maintain the collar. And if you look back at the collar itself, uh, again, six and three quarter inch hole, the hole's integrity is uh, really good. And if you look back, we'll, stand, we'll try to stand back. Uh, there's a shot preceding it, and you can see the ground has a long practice in front of it, making these holes a little bit difficult to drill and hold the call. Again, make that confusion. We'll try to pan out and in. Three more drills uh, located in the west of the PA. Three. Again, run a by there. And if you look closely, you can see the dam that's being constructed. Run from north to south, basically. Just a bit of a I'll pan back, and maybe you can see that the fact that the dam is rather large, largest the urban dam of its kind in North America. And, uh, quite a different project. I'll tell you what this operation does. Every rig. The white bucket there, we're looking at. Every rig.